In all of our topics on public buses, some topics that we might predict what's going to happen next, while some is knowledgeable. A few of our topics involves a learning point. A question from you guys and the answer from the enemy. A talk about theory for bus enthusiasts as an interesting theory point. Welcome to a bus's theory. In this episode of a bus's theory, we will look up into the interline bus duties. A term for bus captains to drive up to three bus services under one duty shift. Is that possible? How does a scheduler arrange the timetable? Why do bus operators prefer interline? There are many possible answers that the enemy will elaborate on in today's video. The interline bus duties in Singapore began a long time ago or before you boss was still stuck onto your mama. Bus operators including Tower Transit Bukit Bato and Go Ahead Punggol prefer interline duties as you do not need to additional manpower to drive the buses, especially during off peak hours. Usually, feeder services were linked with trunk bus service during peak hours. Bus operators prioritize feeder services in peak periods to reduce the waiting time and the bus interchange. Therefore, instead of going off service from the trunk service split shift duty, interlining with another bus service will help to cater for the passenger demand. The scheduler will give you the bus service demand every quarter and research the necessary services. Let's say, service for A9 special duties. Some duties are not required to cater the passenger's demand during peak hours as not many people will be heading to the mid-view building. By looking at other feeder services, they will pick a gap that has high demand in existing bus service duties, longer waiting time, or short breaks. Therefore, two double that on service 1 and 9 will perform at least one cost over trip on service 947 during weekdays PM peak. The benefit of interline is when a bus captain may drive more than one bus service as they are familiar with. You do not need to waste manpower resources such as staffing and buses. Therefore, if bus duty 1 for service A does not require more buses because of low demand during the period, bus duty 1 will allocate service B as an additional bus speed until the demand goes down at the end of the peak period. However, not many bus captains are familiar with the bus service as they will stay to either one or two bus services. Although there is Google Maps on the trapeze, the confidence to drive the particular bus route requires bus captains to understand more about the bus service. Interline will happen during peak hours and AM of peak when AM shift bus captains will go on for their meal break after peak hours. Depending on the bus duty, you may or may not require to change bus once you interline with one another. Not to confuse with dumb bus, the interline also helps to reduce the worry on the manpower. Here are the examples of the bus services with interlining. Should the bus operators continue with the interlining system in Singapore? Leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Bus Theory. Do leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe.